in the exam, in the you, you see that five minutes reading time. That five minutes reading time is very important. And usually what I advise my students is that during that five minutes reading time, don't try to... Okay, okay, okay. Um, quick one. Well, I know that this won't be quick either. I know it won't be quick. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but um, I, I had a student who actually asked me about um, finishing exams. Not finishing the exams, as in finishing exams, but what I mean is that this student told me that he never finishes the exams. You know, like let's say like the exam is like uh, an hour, and then when that hour elapses, you find that most students are not done with the paper, right? They are not done writing, you know. So that's where you find some students saying that, no, I didn't finish. Maybe I didn't answer this question and this question. And stuff. So that's the type of finishing the exam that I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking about. So he told me that he actually has that problem, that he, he never finishes on time, you know. And it started at varsity because I asked him to say, do you have or did you have the same problem in high school? I was like, no. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how you can actually finish writing your exam on time. In fact, when they, when they say, you know, if the, the exam is one hour, maybe let's say quarter two, you are done. And you're just sitting there, be like, hey looking at people like oh yeah have you ever sit have you ever sat in the exam and maybe you finish early and you're just looking at people and like ah that one that one of course is showing him eh? that one <laughs> why am i doing this why am i saying this you know <laughs> you know like you're looking you're like ah that one and you're looking at someone and like ah that one looks like ah, this one that one looks like he's actually doing the right thing you know, that, that's actually what we do. Uh, in fact, that is actually what is always on my mind when I do invigilation. When I'm invigilating, when I'm looking at the students, some students, you know, their body language and then their facial expression can tell you that they are being charred by the exam. And some students, when you look at them, you're like, oh, that one is, seems to be doing something right, you know. Sorry about that, uh, but this is just a funny thought that came to my mind. So how do you finish your exams on time? How do you finish writing on time? So this is what I told the student. In fact, not, let me not make it about him, but let's, let's talk about this. So there is something that I call time management within the test or within the exam. How do you manage time when you are writing an exam? How do you do that? Because... That part is very much important, you know, it's very much important. And um, by rule of thumb, I always tell students to say that um, if a question is like two marks, you shouldn't spend more than two minutes on the question. In fact, you should, one mark should be equivalent to one minute. And that's how that's the standard in most cases, the way we set our exams and our test. You'd find that if you're writing a test or an exam for like 60 marks, that exam is like 60. Um, I mean, if you're writing for the exam for an hour, which is 60 minutes, you'd find that that exam is actually 60 marks, meaning that one mark per question. And I know this sounds like, um, to calculate that can sound like, no, it's like wasting time, but really just look at allocating each question, allocate time for each question. And the way you can do it is that you can look at the marks of the question. So, like I said, if the question, if the exam is 60 marks and is wrote in within 60 minutes, it means that each one mark is cost one minute. So I think maybe as a practice, one should start doing that for different tests. Look at, okay, how many marks is this test? And then how many hours are we expected to write this test? And then from there, you can now make a sort of a quick calculation. 
a pity for those who maybe are not doing mathematics or are not mathematically inclined. Maybe such things can be problematic. But just gauging in your mind to be like, ah, I should spend this much on this question, this much on this question. So time management in the exam is, is, is very much important. And part of time management in the exam, um, one of the techniques I usually teach my students is, not that I teach, not that I teach this, but what I really advise is that in the exam, in the, you, you see that five minutes reading time? That five minutes reading time is very important. And usually what I advise my students is that during that five minutes reading time, don't try to, to solve the questions because they give you five minutes reading time and students start to peruse the paper. They go through the questions, but they are trying to understand and solve the questions. And I'm like, don't do that. That thing is dangerous, you know. Because then what usually happens or what can happen is that you can actually start panicking from there. Let's say you read a question and you don't understand it. And then people start panicking from there to say, yo, I don't know this question and stuff like that. So during that five minutes of reading time, what you should be doing is that you should be identifying the questions. There's a difference between identifying a question and understanding a question. Understanding a question is when now you are trying to solve the question. But identifying the question is just um, figuring out in which section does this question come from or which topic or which concept is this question. For example, in a math exam, then it's just be like, you look at the question like, oh, this is a differentiation question, okay. Then you look at another question like, oh, this is a mathematical induction question, okay. All you're doing is just doing the identification. And obviously, do the identification and look at the mark, right? To be like, okay, this is, this is a question on differentiation. It's worth 10 marks. Hmm. It means that there's a lot that is going on there. Then you move. Because if you try to understand the question during that five minutes of reading time, depending on how mentally strong are you, but let's say you read a question, you don't understand it. And that, not that you don't understand it, but maybe because of the pressure now, I get you are on that thing of like, I want to understand this question. And you read the following question, you don't understand it. Then you start to panic. I once saw a case in the exam where a student really fainted, like fainted. He just saw the question, it's like, oh, Hey guys, these things of academics are very, <laughs> these things will kill us one day, you know. So, and then I've also heard of students having panic attacks in the test or in the exam. In fact, I have once um, had a student who had a panic attack in the exam. And, 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 you know, we need to sometimes talk about this whole things of exams and mental health because I think they are tied up, you know. So, yeah, identify the, those questions. Um, but also, I'm thinking that maybe the different courses are different. I don't know how other courses really go about this. Um, but I would say, my advice would say, during that five minutes reading time, try to identify the questions, right? And then look at the marks. Then after you have done that, 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 that identification, and so what you're doing then now is that you're trying to actually formulate your answering strategy on which question, I'm gonna, which question am I going to start with and which question am I going to end with. So usually what I tell my students is that once you have identified the questions, start with questions which you know you know. So when you are studying, there are, certain, there, are certain, there are certain topics in the course where you are very strong at and you know it yourself. You know that, you know, this course, I'm, I, I'm very strong on this chapter. You know, I know that this chapter or I know that this section, I born, I'm the best in that. You're, you know your strongness in that. 
And similarly, you know which sections you are a bit weak on. You know, and being weak, we don't mean that you can't do those questions. It's just that, you know, like, yeah, this questions, yeah, you know, I'm a bit weak on them, you know. So those are the questions that you should do last. So questions that you are very strong at and questions that, I mean, topics that you are, you know, questions which comes from topics which you are actually strong at, you should start with those questions. And then questions which comes from topics which you are actually passionate about should be next. So firstly, you start with questions from topics which you are strong at. Secondly, you, you go to questions from topics you're actually passionate about. Usually, these are the same things in, for most people. They, they become the same. There can be a certain chapter which you just, you just love. You're just passionate about it. Like, oh, I love this. It makes more sense to me. It's, you know. And that's why I'm saying in most cases, the concepts that you're passionate about end up being the concepts that you actually are strong at. But for some students, you can find that they love a certain section, but they are not good at it, but they love it at least, you know. So you, you need to start with those two varieties because an exam, guys, is all... Uh, behind the exam, I think there is this mental game that is at play. Is a confidence game. So if you start with questions that you are good at and questions that you actually love, what you're actually doing is that you're actually working on increasing your confidence in the exam. And confidence in the exam is everything, man. It's everything, man. Like, you need to be very confident. You know? And by the way, uh, um, a shout-out to Klan Tim Shunani who also has a YouTube, who, who, who talks about this thing. So you can also really check his YouTube channel. I'll put a link on the description below. He, he's, yeah, he, he, he's good at explaining these things. Um, so you might better check him out if you have some time as well. So, because if you start on the wrong foot in the exam, the whole thing becomes a mess. Is that thing, have you ever wake up on a day and in the morning you just have a very bad experience, like in the morning, like something bad happens. Like, I kid you not, like that can affect your whole day versus maybe waking up in a good mood, something great happens in the morning, most likely the whole day is going to be actually very curated in a perfect way. So that's the whole thing with exams. If you start on the wrong foot, you can actually end up affecting the whole thing, you know? can actually end up affecting the whole exam. The whole exam now is just like you are all over. You don't know like what's, what's with what and stuff like that. And you know like in most cases when you work under pressure, that's where you do a lot of mistakes because you are, you know. So I, I would recommend that. And uh, the, the other thing is that you know, once you have seen those questions, like for instance, you need, you need to get to this level of mastery that when you see a question, just reading the question, you already know what is expected of you to do. You already know what are you going to use, which method are you going to use, and how you're going to answer this question. And that comes with practice. That's why before the exam, you need to practice a lot, you know, on the concepts, such that when you see the question, and you can just look at it and be like, I know I have to do this. And without thinking too much. There, of course, in the exam, there are questions which actually will, 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 actually, uh, will, will require you to think more. You know? And then there are questions that you shouldn't be thinking more. You should just be like, psh, psh, psh. You know? So that comes with practice. So if, if I give you a question and you're doing mathematics, just by looking at the question, if I'm saying differentiate, just by looking at the question, you should know that, okay, I'm going to use the chain rule, or I'm going to use whatever rule of differentiation that you're going to use, just by looking at the question. And that comes with mastery, man. You know that, that, that mastery is everything. You know there are people who, um, like, uh, and it comes with practice, you know. I've also seen it with me, like, there are certain... Um, like, for example, when a student comes to consult, once they say a few words, I already know what, what is their problem. Like, I already know, like, once they say a few words, I already know, like, oh, okay, I think this is your problem. And some of them, I even tell them, this is your problem, 
they don't even know is their problem. And we start formulating the problem to say, you have a problem with this and this and this and this. Is that true? And that comes with, it comes with the work, obviously. As a lecturer, I talk with students a lot. I, and then each time, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this to a point that you start even knowing when someone says this, they mean this. It's mastery. So you need to also be the master of your work, the master of that course. When you study a course, you shouldn't just be studying with, no, I, I just, you need to master it to a point whereby, you know, you master the, the, the topics or the concepts to a point where they are like second nature to you. Of course, that, that, that is hard. That's the whole point of studying. And it's hard. It's, it's, but once you get to that point, it's good. So that also helps to to speed up your um, your answering in the exam because you don't waste time trying to figure out what is this, Concha, what did I have seen this? Just by looking at the question, you're like, oh, okay. I know what this is it. Then you just like go, you, you, you do. This is, oh, okay, okay, you know, and stuff like that. Not to say you need to be super fast because what I've also seen in the exam is that people just get in there when they start writing. Some of them, even in that five minutes written time, they already want to write. You don't need to be super fast because you can make mistakes in the process of doing that. But you need to actually just, you know, go with the flow and still be able to do everything within the right time. So... Um, the identification of, of concepts is actually very much important. The other thing which actually is important when coming to exams is, is you being able to link different concepts. Because like you'll never find questions which actually are just, um, they're just on one concept. You usually find questions which are actually on different concepts. You know, So you need to be able to do that. So... Um, the other thing is that you need to practice speed you need to practice speed um, uh, uh, one of the things is one that someone can ask themselves is that if, I, if you didn't finish the exam then the question can be where did you, it means that there is somewhere where you actually sp have spent m most of your time at and because of that, maybe then you were not able to finish the exam on time. Um, and I know before I say what I say, because someone can be like, but just give the students enough time. Give them extra time. And I know then some courses do that. They give people extra time. But also the other thing is that we are also testing you on business and efficiency. Can you think on your feet? Sometimes that's what, and that's the whole point of the exam. Imagine as a professional, like as a doctor, for instance, you want someone who can think on their feet, who can really be able to solve problems quickly or to be able to do their work quickly. So part of the test or the exam is to actually test on the student's preciseness and efficiency. Can they be able to recognize things quite quicker? Which sometimes is unfair because then if somebody's a bit slower, but hey, it's part of the whole process, right? So one of the things you need to train yourself for is speed or what you have to practice is speed and usually the advice that I usually give my students is that before the exam do a past paper exam and that is when you have studied everything do a past paper exam and do it under exam conditions pretend as though you're in the exam do the paper. If the paper is like one hour, write it for one hour. If you didn't finish within that hour, then ask yourself why. Maybe I've spent too much time on this question. And then, it, then if that's the case, it means that why did you spend too much time on this question? Maybe it's because I really do not understand 
the concepts very better or maybe whatever the reason is, then you polish on that reason. You improve on that reason. That's the whole point. So, so and then when you do that past paper, you do it starting with the questions you know and the questions that you, you love or you're passionate about and leaving the questions that you're not strong at at the end. You start with questions that you're very strong at and you know questions that actually you're passionate about and then you leave everything at the end. And then thereafter, if you didn't finish within you know, that 60 minutes, if the, the, the past paper was for one hour, then the question is, why didn't I finish? So it's more like you are self-diagnosing yourself. You know, you, it's more like you need to understand yourself better, you know. For example, uh, when I was a student, like, I, I used to spend too much time on questions which are very computational. Like, they, uh, you know, for those of you who have done matrices, you know that matrices are very computationally heavy. You know, I used to spend a lot of time on those questions, and I knew that, you know. So then I started working on a strategy on how to can be faster on those kind of questions, how to improve on my computational skills and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, when you're doing maths, especially when you're doing abstract maths, um, pure maths, is that you don't count a lot. A lot of people think when you're doing maths, you're good with numbers. But maths, it gets to a point where it's no longer about numbers. It's, it's something else. It's a different beast. You know, so because I've done a lot of abstract maths, when I do maths which has to do with computation, I struggle because I, I'm like you get what I mean. I'm not I'm not used to numbers in that sense of like you know, but but it's something that I had to work on. So you need to also be doing something like that um, on your part, you know. And then from there, that's how that's going to teach you to practice speed to say okay. You know, you need to practice speed in that sense. And it, it all just come down to all of the things that I've been mentioning in the video to say, you know, look at how much time you spend on a question. You know, the time management in the exam, like you spend too much time on this question. So the idea is to actually distribute the time wisely within the questions that you're actually doing. And, and, and I think in that way, one can be able to actually finish the exams right on time um yeah that's what i have to say about this topic of finishing your exams on time i'm trying to figure out if i didn't f i did forget something um you know the beauty thing about this is that if i forget something i'll do another recording okay let's go and get those distinction guys this exam are ours let's do this